Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'll read from the book of Psalms, 73, verse 26. And it says, My flesh and my heart feel it, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Indeed, we shall not mourn like those without hope. But we shall mourn like those that are being comforted by the Lord. My brother Habert. I am Habert's older sister. He comes right after me. Before me was my brother Osita. Osita passed, like Emeka said, 26 years ago. And Habert took on the realms as the head, assumed the role son of the family, the first son of the family. Indeed, it is my privilege to speak to you about Habat. It's really an honor to speak to you about Habat. Now, I'll scan through Habat's life, and I'll take you through our childhood, the sort of child he was, so that Tochi and Hannah might know, and David might know the sort of father they had as a child in his childhood. Habat. I think Herbert's life was shaped by three things. One was his secondary education in Sokoto. I think Ike has referred to that a few times in the past because I think Ike went to Federal Government College Kaduna as well. As, at a very young age, Herbert had to go to Kaduna by himself on the train. Not these days when we are helicopter parents. Our parents couldn't afford it, so Herbert went by himself. I think that developed the sort of person Habat later became. Another thing I think shaped Habat's personality was my father as a disciplinarian. My father was in the military with a strict disciplinarian, so we couldn't faff around. Now, the third thing I think shaped Habat's life was Habat as a middle child. We, came, we grew up in a house of six siblings, but we had a, we had a cousin that we referred to as my brother. So, he, so we considered ourselves seven. But Habat was stuck in the middle. So he was a middle child. I think these three things actually shaped who Habat became. Middle child, father as a disciplinarian, and trip to Sokoto. As a child, trip to Sokoto, like I said earlier on, meant that he had to go through the train stations and whatever it took for him to get from the east up, down, up to Sokoto and made it all the time. My father got frustrated with that and moved him to Worry. In moving him to Worry, Herbert was no different from any other child. He was actually very playful. My father would visit him on occasion and find Herbert playing with his towel outside kicking football. My father was livid because my father was a strict disciplinarian and, disciplinarian and believed seriously in academics. So Herbert got good whooping for playing outside when my father paid those surprise visits. Now, by the time Herbert took school set, his school set wasn't as great as my father wanted him to do. So contrary to what people think, Herbert was never really exceptional. And I say this because you, you don't have to be exceptional to succeed. It just takes hard work and tenacity, which I think, which I believe Herbert realized later. After, Habat's, um, after the school said that Habat made, my father made Habat repeat, Habat said to my father that it, this would be the last time this would happen. And true to his word, it was the last time. Because the next time my father paid him a visit in University um, Enugu campus, Habat was found in the library. My father paid him another visit only to hear Habat was in the library. My father was rest assured that indeed his son had turned the leaf. So I think that really made a difference. I think that was a hallmark of Habat moving from being a child to a child that, you know, to becoming what he really wanted to be. Now, as a young adult in the house, we all sat down around the kitchen table and we always wondered, what are we going to study? And Habat was the only child in the house that was very clear on what he wanted to study. He said he wanted to be an accountant. Now, we all wondered, why do you want to be an accountant? We don't even hear about accountants. My mother had one uncle, just one uncle that was an accountant. And God bless his soul, he was a wonderful man. But then we thought, well, that's the only person we know. Why do you want to be an accountant? Why don't you become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer or something? Abba said, all I want to be is an accountant. 
We said, okay. So, and then he said to us, by the age of 30, I'm going to be a millionaire. I would say, yeah, right. So we continued on this venture at home. Now, an indication of who Herbert was is the fact that Herbert and my mother, about the same time, embarked on a trip to the US. Um, knowing Herbert, he had expensive taste and was very neat. So I think, I believe they went shopping while they were in the US. And I think Herbert bought like two or three new suits, at the time considered expensive. Now, in those days when your luggage came, there was a chance that your luggage probably would not even come. Or maybe it would come with half of the things taken. So Herbert, to mitigate this risk, decided to wear all the suits. <laughs> and so we And when he came back and we said what happened, he said, you know what, I couldn't take the chance, you know. I couldn't take because what if my luggage didn't come, what would have happened to my suits? So it just gives you an indication of the sort of person he was, whom at the end of the day, you would not be surprised, became the astute banker that he became because, you know, you, you can't borrow Habas money without paying him back. So... Um, you, you all know that, and of course, the story of India, you guys are all familiar with it, and he told me at the time, and I said, Haba, don't even go there, and he said, I will get my money back. Um, and Becca forgot to tell you, there were so, Haba was pristine, clean, and neat, and had all these shirts always nicely organized and all that, before he went to Henry Massacre's house, I think Henry spoke earlier. And Emeka would take Haba's shirts and play with it, go and, you know, and Herbert to come back and would hate to find that his shirts were not in the state, pristine state he left them. That would constantly cause a fight in the house. So it tells you that all of the characteristics that made him who he became were actually rooted in him as a child. Now, as we grew older and adult, Herbert as an adult, um, he, of course, like you would know, metamorphosed, changed, evolved, um, like I said, I assumed the role of head of the home after Osita left and um, took care of my parents. I mean, in a way that, you know, blew their minds beyond their imaginations. And I think the Lord God actually blessed Habat so much so that to be able to um, make the loss of Osita lighter. Habat loves children, loves children so much. So we're not surprised that he has a quiver full of them. Um, so as an adult, um, how about, how about, yes, Herbert took on the role of um, Osita, um, became the first child in the home. And um, Herbert evolved to wanting to impact. I think the last few words um, we shared, um, which was on Thursday night when he called me, like we would usually chat about so many things, you know, and he would say, you know, you know, doctor, for example, how about, you know, Papa went back to school, right? Um, and he would say, doctor, would you believe they thought I wouldn't finish law? And I said, obviously, they don't know who you are. Um, we had, we had an ongoing joke, you know, like somebody mentioned, how about, how about is one that really loves academia? And so he, how about would go back to school and get a master's and then he would get another master's. And then he'll get yet another master. And I said, you know, aren't you tired of all these masters you're getting? When are you going to move up a little bit? And he says, you know, doctor, you know, um, well, you have a PhD from Stanford, but guess what? Um, my bank balance is more than yours. And, and I'll say to him, yes, your bank balance is more than mine, but can, can you just move up and just, you know, just, just move up from being, you know, getting all the masters? And then, you know, then he set up the Wigwe University, you know, out of a passion. Anybody who knows my parents will know that, you know, Herbert had, a, you know, was a penchant for education. Um, Tochi can attest to the number of lessons they had, whom their mother, Chizoba, rescued them from most of the time. Um, so it wasn't surprising that he set up the Uigwe University. And I said to him, oh my goodness, finally you set up the Uigwe University. And so now you can ascribe to yourself as many doctorates as you want. And so it was an ongoing joke we had with ourselves, um, friendly competition as, as siblings. Um, we thank God so much for the life of Herbert. Um, I am truly honored to be his sister. Um, I couldn't have asked for more. And I, and I thank God so much for the privilege. Um, Tochi, David, Hannah, she's not here, Okachi, 
you know what? Um, clean your eyes. Roll your shoulders back. Habat has set the stage for you. With God on our side, you are, you are set to go. Don't worry about the future because we're totally with you. The principles that he set, that he brought you up with, we're here to ensure that those values and principles continue. And you would find out that the principles that set him up the way he is, the way he was, hardworking, tenacious, ambitious, and all that, you will achieve even much more than your father did to the glory of God Almighty. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.